Good morning, everyone. Time for coffee with Rob. Today's the first day I've been in my office. Um, I usually sit at the kitchen table. But today I want to talk about the Holy Spirit while we drink our coffee. I know it's a little late, but what the Holy Spirit does is there are there spirits? Yes, there are spirits. Yes, there is good. There is evil. There is the Spirit of God. There is the spirit of Satan. There is wickedness in the world. There are demons. There are devils. There are angels. They all exist. The Bible is very clear that those are absolutely uh, real. But today what I want to look at is how the Spirit operates within the believer. So we'll go through a little bit of history, and then we'll talk about um, what the Spirit does in the believer. Sorry, let me get that set up. So, um, number one, are there spirits? Are there demons? Are there devils? Are there angels? Yes. Number one, yes. So, um, the Spirit of God dwells, it says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, I believe, that the Spirit of God moved upon the earth. So, number one, we know that God is what? He is spirit. Those that worship Him must worship Him in spirit. And the Spirit is referred to many times throughout the Bible. So, number one, and then it's like uh, there's more people or like more spirits in heaven, more angels. I would say God, pre-incarnate Christ, the Holy Spirit, the angelic witnesses, even the devil himself, Lucifer, who he was called before he was thrown out in uh, Luke uh, ten eighteen, and uh, the, the conflict of war in heaven that happened in Revelation 12. There was a war in heaven uh, where Satan mounted an army against uh, the God himself. And it says that Michael, the archangel, overcame him and threw him out of heaven. And Jesus himself uh, testifies and says, I saw Satan fall from heaven. So we know that uh, demons exist. The devil exists. The Holy Spirit exists. Jesus exists. God exists in spirit. First Timothy 6.16 says that God dwells in unapproachable light. He sits above the circle of of the earth in Isaiah. So um, we know these things exist. So you're not, if people say, oh, there's there's no ghosts, there's no, there are absolutely ghosts, spirits, demons, devils, angels. Now know this, that God created all of it, all of it for his service. Some rebelled against him and they were thrown out of heaven. And remember too, that God and Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, of course, that's the Holy Trinity is not, the Trinity is not named in the Bible, but it is alluded to that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's what we refer to as the Trinity. They exist. They, the devil was created. He was Lucifer. He was the most beautiful angel that existed. And it says that basically he had pride in his heart. He tried to elevate himself above God. And I guess if I was the most beautiful person on the earth, I might be arrogant too. So in heaven, he was the most beautiful angel. He spoke with beautiful pipes, it said. he was His voice would put people in a trance or the angels in a trance. And so they followed him. And so he became arrogant, prideful, rebelled against God and was thrown to the earth. And he became the devil, Belial, the betrayer, the, the accuser of the brethren, all these things. And he roams about on the earth with his demonic dominions. But anyway, I just wanted to give a little background there. Uh, the thing is this. The Holy Spirit is on this earth. The Holy Spirit is within each one of us. When Jesus left in John 14, 26, he says, When I leave, I'm going to send my comforter, my counselor, my teacher to you. And in Acts 2, uh, in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit was released upon the church, was released upon the, uh, the disciples. It's the beginning of the church age. And uh, Jesus ascended in Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2, the promised Holy Spirit was delivered. So each believer, and actually every person on the planet, and you can argue with me on this if you want to, but every person on the planet is exposed to, not indwelt by, but exposed to the Holy Spirit. And I would say through our convictions, even if you're not a believer in Christ, you feel convictions. You know when you do wrong. And that's the Holy Spirit working on an individual to bring that individual to Jesus Christ, to bring him to the cross or her to the cross so that they could repent of their sins. Because God says, I'm not willing that any should perish. I want all to come 
to repentance and be saved. Uh, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, God says he gets no glory from anyone who sins and goes to hell. He wants all men to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and be saved. Therefore, the Holy Spirit convicts the sinner. Now, that's what the sinner does. Now, the sinner, some people uh, don't feel the conviction. After a while, the Bible says you can sear your conscience. You can be so wicked, evil, and nasty that the Holy Spirit has no effect on you. It's kind of like, um, I don't know, like painkillers, drugs, alcohol, name it. You know, the first time you do something like that, it uh, it can affect you it, very strongly. And then later on, you need a little more. You need a little more. You need a little more to get the same effect. And everybody knows that's true, and that's common. It's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. If you're a sinner and you're resisting uh, the Holy Spirit of God that's leading you to come to Jesus Christ, it takes more. And eventually, you sear your conscience to the point where there's no effect on you. However, for those people that do respond to the Holy Spirit, this is what I want to concentrate on today, is you can be led to Christ by the Holy Spirit. When you get to the cross, you repent, and then you are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. And so those are my notes for today here. So we know that God came. He was in spirit. God promised that the Holy Spirit would come. We, we know that there was a conflict, and there continues to be an angelic conflict in the spirit world all around us. You can look at Joel chap, or excuse me, Job chapter 1 for that. It continues. The war continues. And the battle is for the heart, mind, soul, and spirit of the individual. So if you're conflicted, it's because the devil wants your soul, God wants your soul, and you can feel that conflict unless you've seared your conscience completely and said, I don't care about any of this. I'm going to live my life, and I'm going to party when I go to hell. People do that, and that's a, a unfortunately a lie. You're not going to party in hell. But anyway... Um, the Holy Spirit has always has good purposes, but God came, he was a spirit. There was a conflict in heaven, and Satan was thrown out of heaven. The angelic conflict, which continues today, there are spirits, there are demons. And then in John 14, 26, is what I like, is when Jesus says, I'm going to go away and the Holy Spirit's going to come. What does the Holy Spirit do for the believer? Let's look at this. Um, the, the, the Holy Spirit for the believer can empower you. It will indwell you. In Ephesians 1, it says it will indwell you because you're God's property. Number 3, it says it will strengthen and assist you. And number 4 is it will discipline you. So God disciplines the ones that he loves. So don't ever feel if you're a believer that you're alone. The Bible is very clear that the Holy Spirit indwells you. It assists you. It prays for you. It intercedes for you. It empowers you. It looks out for you. And it comforts you, it counsels you, and teaches you. And let me look at, let's look at a few of those words. And I've got all these verses. Maybe I'll take a picture of these notes that I took. In, in there. But the, the Spirit will rest on you in Isaiah 11, 2. Isaiah 44, 3. I will pour out my Spirit on your sons and daughters. Um, in uh, Genesis 1, 2, the Spirit of God moved upon the earth. In Isaiah 13, the Spirit. And I uh, Acts 2, 16. Uh, Peter talks about Joel and Joel chapter 2 I think it's verse 28 the Holy Spirit coming and our sons and daughters will prophesy and they will they will see old men will see visions so the Holy Spirit's been promised from the beginning Isaiah I can't read my writing here I will pour out my spirit in the last day Ezekiel 39 maybe 29 I will pour out my spirit in the last days Joel 2 28 I will pour out my spirit on all people all people all people will be led to Christ through the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Now, it won't indwell all people. It only indwells and assists believers. Zechariah 4, 6, Not by my might, not by my power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. God's not going to bring an angelic army down here. He's not going to go into, at the time of the Jews, into Rome and destroy Rome so that the Christians could rule. But the spirit is going to come down and convict each man, lead us to the cross so that we might be saved by his spirit. And we won't be saved and assisted through the Spirit of God. So, let's take a look at it. What does the Spirit do for the believer? Well, he empowers, in the Old Testament, by the way, in the Old Testament, the Spirit did exist. The, the Holy Spirit empowered God's men for service, for specific tasks, for specific missions. So, the Holy Spirit did exist in the Old Testament. So, let us make God in our image in Genesis 126, 
uh, so you know there's more than one person there watching the creation and the creation of mankind. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord, Isaiah 61, 1, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the good news. Prophets in the old day were empowered by the Holy Spirit to do service for God. They may not have been indwelt, but certainly for temporary service, they, they uh, indwelt the prophets, or Holy Spirit indwelt the prophets for writing the, the, uh, the Bible, writing their books, being assisted to do God's work through the power of the Holy Spirit. But in the believer, <clears throat> um, we're empowered for service. Romans chapter 8 is probably one of the best um, books or chapters if you want to read to see what the Holy Spirit is doing for you. He's assisting you. He's interceding for you. He's comforting you. He's helping you. So if you're a believer, when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, in order to show the whole angelic conflict in the spirit world, in the world that you belong to God, he sends his spirit into your heart, into your body, into your mind. He, you're indwelt, you're occupied, you're possessed, for lack of a better term, by the Holy Spirit to do God's service and to show everybody you belong to Jesus Christ. You are property of God. I bought you with a price. I own you, and you've accepted that free gift by grace through faith. And Ephesians 1.13 says that when you accept Christ, the Spirit comes upon you and dwells within your body. And he's there for service. So he's there to help you. So that's to empower you. And dwelt as a down payment, you belong to God. So you're empowered, you're indwelt, and it says a down payment, you belong to God, Ephesians 1.13. And so we are empowered, you're indwelt, and then he's here to strengthen and assist you. Romans 8.26 uh, and 27 talks about making intercession for you. This is when you people say, I, man, I don't know where my life is going. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not, I don't know how to pray. Well, you don't have to know how to pray. You just get alone with God and say, Holy Spirit, work through me. You know my heart. He says, I search your heart. I search your mind. I know your desires. I know your weaknesses. I know what you need. And I can help you in your weaknesses. The Holy Spirit can do that for you and is willing to do that and does that for you. And he intercedes with Jesus Christ on your behalf to say, this believer is, needs some help in this area. But you got to ask for it. Ask for it. Pray for it. So he does that in Romans 8, 26 and 27. Um, so he'll strengthen and he'll assist you. Now, another one that people don't like to hear, but this is true. And that is uh, he empowers you. He indwells. He strengthens and assists you. But he'll also discipline you. God says in uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6, that he disciplines those that he loves. Just like you do your children. You don't want your children running out in the traffic. So you discipline them so they don't do that. You discipline your children because you love them. You want them to be contributors to society, not a drain on society. But hopefully you want them to serve Jesus Christ. So you discipline them in love. And that's what God does. So in, in Hebrews 12, 6, it says he disciplines us and he trains us. And let me give you some Greek words and then we'll close out. So in Hebrews 12, 6, it says... <clears throat> He padeos us. He trains us, chastens us, corrects us, and brings us to maturity. Same thing we do with our children. God disciplines, he loves. He padeos us. It's a pedagogue. If you're a teacher, you're a pedagogue. You're a teacher. Some of you, or some teachers are very strict, and sometimes the Holy Spirit is very strict. So he padeos, P-A-I-D-E-U-O. He's a helper. And this is in John 14, 26, for this, the next few words. He's a helper. He's the Holy Spirit. And he's a teacher. So what does this mean? Helper is parakletos. He's an advocate, a counselor, a comforter, and an intercessor. This is all in John 14, 26. What does the Holy Spirit do for the believer? He's a helper, a counselor, a, uh, a comforter, an intercessor, and an advocate on your behalf. He's a spirit. He's a pneuma. P-N-U-E-U-M-A. He's a breath. You can't see him. It's air. It's breath. He's around you. He's a spirit. So he's the helper, the Holy Spirit. Holy is Hagion, sacred. He's set apart for the service of God. And his service is on behalf of God, on, on your behalf, and for your best interest. And he's also a teacher. <clears throat> and the word there is didasco. He's imparting knowledge to you. In Matthew 10, it says, when you are arrested for my service, don't worry about what you must say. The Holy Spirit will bring to your mind. He'll bring back to your remembrance those things that you've been taught or studied and placed in your memory. And he'll bring it to your mind. You don't have to worry about what to say. The Holy Spirit will bring to your mind. Isn't it neat when you're talking to somebody about Christ 
or you're talking to somebody to help them, or you're trying to identify with the situation and be assistance as a believer to somebody, when you have that, and all of a sudden this thing pops in your mind, it's the Holy Spirit giving you a thought to help a person perhaps that you're dealing with, or perhaps in a situation that you're in the Holy Spirit can bring a scripture to mind to help you through that situation. So <clears throat> this is the Holy Spirit. He indwells us. He shows us that we belong to God. Uh, he, he is our advocate, counselor, comforter, intercessor. He is wind or breath or spirit. He is sacred. He is set apart by or for God, and that's Agion. And he is our teacher, Didasco or uh, Didaxi, which he is a teacher. He is to direct us, admonish us, impart knowledge to us, bring to remembrance things that we need to know in certain times. Uh, and he is just, uh, anyway, the Holy Spirit's on our side. You're never alone in Christ Jesus because God promised in uh, John 14, 26, that the Holy Spirit would be released upon mankind all the way back to Joel, all the way back to Zechariah 4, 6. And then he was delivered as promised in Acts chapter 2 to assist the believers to start the church at the day of Pentecost. As you can see, the evidence was they spoke in known tongues People heard them speak in their own language as empowered by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was delivered in Acts chapter 2. And the church began Acts chapter 2 in the day of Pentecost. So anyway, that's just a brief thing. If you have any questions, please send me questions. Um, again, I'm not answering anybody that wants to be negative and crazy, so don't waste your time. But if you have any questions or problems or prayer requests, anything you'd like to hear me speak on. I, I've got a master's degree in theology. And I would love to help anybody that's struggling or has uh, really read scriptures that they have struggled with. I would love to help anybody I can uh, clarify that so you can grow in your spiritual walk with Christ. So have a great day. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.